great to have you back on campus. Always a pleasure. Do you like to share your views on how do you feel coming back to your alma mater and interacting with the students here? It's always great to be back on campus. I think you all have such a wonderful campus here. Unfortunately, we had uh, it's just good. yeah on Saint Anthony Barber Road, which used to be all of one floor of a building with four classrooms. Uh, but what you all have here is is I guess distracting from a study point of view, but uh, great to spend two years on. And in that sense, it's always great to interact with students because uh, from from our time where we used to be pretty cut off from the world, we all are today so connected with what's happening. Uh, so when we do have an interaction, uh, it's like interacting with peers because at least when it comes to access to information, uh, because everything is available for you and because there is a drive amongst you all to kind of succeed, uh, you all are that much better prepared than what we used to be. So yeah, I end up learning a lot. I end up actually getting far more motivated, seeing the enthusiasm amongst your youngsters. Yeah, so it's always great fun. Whenever there is an opportunity, I love to come back. Thank you so much. Today the theme of the discussion was the current economic outlook, reforms, growth in technology. Yeah. What is that one thing which you, which actually, uh, you know, uh, stood out for you? So I think uh, what stood out for me was the very number one inputs that we got from the various speakers because each one came from a different background and hence added uh, to the discussion. But what impressed me most was the last 15 minutes, uh, the Q&A with the students. I think uh, just the general level of awareness what, with what's happening in the world around, their inquisitiveness to know more. Uh, I, mean, I have to say quite a few students here today are far better prepared and far better geared up for success uh, than what we used to be. Uh, and hence, it's, it's always such kind of interactions where we bring our experience and perspective to bear. Uh, to marry that with how y'all are viewing things, it tends to be a more evolved discussion than just a one-way dialogue uh, that typically a speaker would have with the audience. So yeah, that's really rewarding most of the time. Thank you. Could you share a few insights on how can one prepare oneself for the unforeseen risks? Yeah, that's an interesting one. Uh, risks today, by their very nature, are unpredictable. Uh, and uh, to add to the unforeseen elements, so like... like uh, uh, I think uh, we already mentioned uh, today either you know about it but don't know what kind of impact they will have or you frankly don't even know uh, that this is a, a danger lurking around the corner and uh, to that extent I think uh, what one calls scenario analysis by way of just forecasting and predicting the what ifs uh, not really the whether it is likely to happen or what's the probability to happen but if it happens then what uh, Frankly, if you build your business model from a perspective of if it happens in a lot of these sort of black swan events, you will not be viable at all. But does that mean you don't start the project? Clearly not. So to that extent, you are at least better prepared if and when it hits. God forbid if it does it. Uh, so at least your response in that sense. You know, that's really about in the real world where you have these response teams. It's not about, uh, like we saw in the recent uh, movie on, uh, on that plane which landed on the Hudson River in the US. I don't think anyone was prepared for rescuing passengers out of an airplane, right? But if you have looked at these sort of scenarios before by way of just thinking through that what if this happens, at least mentally you've gone through the notions of this is what I will do. Maybe you're going to do it for the first time. So in a lot of these sort of situations and all the more today, today, so today with disruption pretty much becoming the norm, let's take demonetization for that matter. Nobody really expected it to happen. Nobody knew what demonetization, the last one had happened decades ago. So to that extent, today at least, uh, given those experiences, you are at least better geared up that if something as disruptive as this happens, how do you begin to react to it? And if you have thought through it, at least you are better prepared as and when you need to react to it. So I guess that's really how you begin to uh, evaluate by way of what responses could be in scenarios as and when and if they happen. So one needs to be proactive. You have to be. Thank you for your valuable insight. Sure. Finally, one mm -hmm. last message sure. you would like to give to the students mm -hmm. on how can we utilize these two years of MBA at SIBM Pune. Sure. So first, the more serious part, and then I'll come to the more fun part. Uh, sure. The serious part, essentially, I think you have to look upon yourselves as a sponge. Uh, just, just, just absorb knowledge as and when you're getting it. At times, there will be, there will be information overload. So you've got to kind of bring your filters by your what to absorb and what not to but uh, somewhere today you have the same mediums as anyone else you've got your 
traditional newspapers, you've got your textbooks and the traditional parts, you've got the new age television, internet, Bloomberg terminals, etc. So you are actually real time connected to the world. And in that sense, don't let that uh, opportunity go by. Today, like the Americans would say, the luck of the draw is in our favor. You at least have all this access. So use that, try and absorb as much as you can. Uh, don't really get into a mode of, of trying to reject at this point of time. Let it come through. Uh, get into analysis mode. Just don't let what you are absorbing be data. Try and process it and make it information and analysis. You today have to make decisions. Whether it's right, wrong, time will tell, that's not the point. You have to get into a mindset of arriving at a decision which involves the whole absorption of knowledge and processing of data to come out with, with the results. Uh, so that's the more serious part. The fun part is these are the two best years of your life. You're going to be after this getting into, if one would call it the rigmarole of work. So make the most out of it. They've got such a wonderful campus. Uh, like they say, study hard but party harder. Uh, Symbiosis has got a very rich tradition of couples forming on campus. So uplift, uplive or, or ensure that that tradition continues and uh, at times the environment and the weather is very conducive on that front. But on a lighter note, yeah, enjoy to the fullest. Uh, studies is clearly definitely the point of focus, but let it not be the only point of focus. Uh, build an all-round personality. It, it really helps you in your future life, whether it's sports or any other pursuits that you have. And build long, long-term friendships. I think at the end of the day, you realize that what really stays with you uh, from campus is your friendships and relationships that you've built up. And uh, you always will have that friend to call upon uh, as and when and if you need him. Uh, so yeah, that's really how it is. Just enjoy your life and live to the fullest for these two years. Thank you for the value of your insight. Sure. It's a pleasure talking to you. Always Thank a you pleasure. so much. Thank you and all the best. Thank you so much.